Kia ora. Welcome, Bronwyn. Thank you. Kia ora. You're listening uh, to the Common Ground YouTube channel, and I've invited Bronwyn Newton to share with us today about the Urban Habitat Collective. Bronwyn and I know each other through the Society for Alternative Housing Development, which is a collective of those of us who want to see housing done better here in Aotearoa. And uh, we're working on a number of different projects. So we do have a website, check that out. I'll make a link in the Common Ground web, uh, website. So I'd like to introduce Bronwyn. She is a lawyer, a play center, a property developer. Not a very common skill set. She finds it really satisfying to use these skills in her inspiring project. As a card-carrying extrovert, she's loving getting to know all the people who have joined and shown interest in her community. Uh, they have two lovely uh, boys, Noah and Lewis, and a smiley dog called Wanda. That's her and her husband. It's going to be interesting to see how we all adapt to apartment life. Well, that's a great lead in Bronwyn to the Urban Habitat Collective. So this is just going to be an overview as to what your project is about, giving people a basic idea, because we actually have a presentation scheduled with you uh, for us to be able to go more in depth and for people to ask questions about this really unique project. So that's going to be Thursday, the 12th of November at 1 p.m. People will have a chance to meet you uh, and interact and we'll go. Yeah, so this is our overview. I can't wait to hear more about this Urban Habitat Collective. So tell us about your project. Well, thanks, Zola. It's lovely to be here. And uh, as you can imagine, with co-housing, it takes up all of your brain space. So I have talked about this a lot in the last three years uh, since my co-founder, Jesse Matthews, who's uh, one of the architects, um, since we met. And as is the customary in Wellington, we had coffee. And we got talking about apartment living and why there weren't the kind of apartments that we wanted to live in, in terms of apartments that accommodated families and that had shared space and that um, enabled you to live in an apartment but still do all of the things that you would want to do in an urban, you know, in a suburban setting. So places to do messy jobs, to have pets, to have greenery, to have trees to sit under. These things were just not being built by developers. And so we realized that we were just going to have to do it ourselves. Now, fortunately, we met uh, another a, a young couple um, who got two small children who were Hannah and Thomas, who were interested in doing likewise. And then Jesse's parents decided that they too would be part of this, this project. And things just went from strength to strength from there. So we, we managed to put a, a core group together really within the in the first few months and fortunately I had a connection to some landowners in Adelaide Road uh, they were third generation engineers who'd had a workshop on the site and I think everybody in Wellington had said to Brian at some point or another when you want to retire just let me know because that's a really great piece of land Fortunately, uh, we started the conversation with them and, and they were really enthusiastic about what we were planning and they uh, were willing to talk to us without going to the market, which was you know, a really great um, boost to the project. So we negotiated with them and at this point we had eight households involved in the project. So it was quite a stressful time um, to, to be committing to, to buying a piece of land and um, without uh, you know obviously without the full number of of members and uh, but fortunately we were able to put a deal together it, it wasn't that cheap i have to say and that's um but what we realized is that land is one of the biggest barriers to co-housing because it's very hard to get a group together before you've got somewhere to put the building and it's very hard to get a piece of land until you've got the group so a lot of groups spend a lot of time trying to to deal with those two things, both trying to put the group together without being able to say where or when the project will go forward, as well as being able to sort of build a group and therefore make a decision about committing to the purchase of land. So we were fortunate in that our, our people, the people that we had involved at the time were incredibly courageous and and they they committed to, to buying the, the property. So that was when things really started to get real and we 
there were a lot of conversations about about how big our project would be, about really what our our organising principles were, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, that's that's how things started off. Okay, so just to be clear, this is a would you categorize this as a community led housing initiative that it comes from the community group, the group that you have? Yes, yeah, it is. Um, we we are self financing, so I've often joked with people that we are we are innovating middle class housing. In fact, in terms of how the expenses are going, we're probably innovating upper middle class housing. And we just have to be content with that. We, you know, a lot of people talk about, um, oh, so you're doing social housing? Like, mm, no, not really. Uh, oh, you're doing affordable housing? Mm, no, not really that either. So really what we're doing is demonstrating that when people get together to build their own homes, they make different decisions to what developers would make. We definitely are prioritizing different features where, you know, we've, we've prioritized sun and greenery and and views and the acoustic, um, you know, in, insulation properties of our building, all things that developers tend to uh, not see as important, but then they're not going to live in the building and we are. So, yeah. Really wonderful to see that you're creating something that's going to work for your day-to-day living to have really a good quality of life in that space and you've been able to design it accordingly. And I believe it's got shared space as well. So you also wanted to be able to have a sense of community, unlike any other apartment where you really just have your your one piece. So tell us about a little bit about that shared space. Sure. Yeah, I'm I'm really excited about this aspect of it. So really the, the driving difference is the fact that that we are selecting, we've selected people, you know, into the well, people have selected themselves into the project because they want to have this kind of community relationship with their neighbours and we really strongly believe that if you the built environment needs to reflect your values in this way if you don't create a space for these interactions to happen that that they just won't be supported and so our design is particularly um it has a lot it has private spaces so your apartments are obviously Fully private and self-contained, and and have and have deck spaces, but we also have a 70 square meter common room in the on the ground floor, which will be where we'll have shared meals probably once or twice a week, and then we have a guest room, so people don't need to have their own guest room; they can um, book in for when Nana comes to stay, and and she can stay in the guest room that looks out on the garden. We also have a shared workshop which has got a lot of people who are interested in, in woodworking and stuff very excited. And we have a roof deck. So that's going to be an exciting, um, we'll be able to watch the sun come up and the sun go down. It was one of those things that when we're looking at cost, we looked at the roof deck and thought, oh, you know, can we live without it? But after much discussion, everybody said, no, we must have the roof deck. And in fact, there was an impassioned defense from Jesse, the architect, uh, in favor of introverts. He said, no, and we've got quite a range of introverts to extroverts in the project. And we expect that, you know, some people will spend more time in the shared spaces and other people will will want to, you know, be be more private or more or in smaller groups. And really the, the uh, roof deck is going to be a great sort of uh, location for those kind of different interactions. The other thing about our project is that it's actually made up of two buildings with a big garden, shared garden space in between. So that's going to be a lovely, a lovely place to hang out. There's a big patio and an outdoor fireplace, and uh, and it also preserves our sun. Um, you know, with the the design, we'll we'll always get western sun no matter what building happens around us. Oh, that's fantastic! And I know that uh, I'll put the website so people can see this design. I believe your your website. Thanks quite helpful for people to be able to also learn about this project. Um, And so I also wanted to um, just uh, touch on the things that we'll be covering in the presentation so people can know that, yes, the website does give information, but in the presentation, we're really going going, uh, into some details that you might not be able to get on the website. We'll be talking a little bit more about, you know, the site and how you did the design as a, you know, as a collaborative of people, the social aspects that you have already had to deal with and just coming together as a group and, and how you intend to 
perspective uh, into the into the uh, future, the financial aspects and how you were able to manage that cash flow and working with um, investors or, or the bank and, and affordability considerations, because that's a big one when um, talking about mm -hmm. when the ready is so expensive. Uh, legal considerations, how you've been able to do consents and regulations, um, the tenure model of how people are buying in and how people will be able to sell on when they want to leave, um, and the policies that you would like to see change. And that's part of what we're doing at the Society for Alternative Housing Development is really looking at this community-led sector being its own way of doing housing here that isn't really recognized in Aotearoa and the policy recommendations that you have in order for groups in the future who'd like to follow in your footsteps will have an easier time about that and what you recommend. And uh, I've heard some ecological considerations that are wonderful we can talk more about that. And, and I've heard you already talk about some challenges and I'm sure there's others that have come up that would be really helpful for people to know about. So this presentation is really for either future residents who wanna see what it feels like to go through a process like this. Uh, it could be a pioneer that would like to think about actually leading a project. I think hearing that you've survived it and it's going to actually be happening can give people confidence that this is something that they actually can succeed at doing. And, uh, and, and those who are enabling it, you know, we, as we talked about policy, there's lots of folks that can make or break a project, um, either whether it be affordability or just to happen at all. And we really want those who are enabling uh, housing in this country to be able to hear from those who are doing it and to be able to get on board with us and say, yeah, I see this as a great way that more housing can come into Aotearoa without it being a burden on the government or a burden on the social housing sector, that actually community can lead its own housing solution, but there's not that many people who are gonna be stepping up to do it if they have to feel like they're uh, swimming upstream for a number of years um, and it's costing them you know, a fortune. So I think you, know, you have so much to share in this regard. There's not so many brave, courageous, uh, committed people um, like you and those in your group who who have seen a project like this through and in its apartment building which is really great because it shows the urban side of things uh, some people think land and sprawling suburbs and whatever but and then we talk about what does it look like to build up but we don't actually know what that looks like and you're demonstrating that how people can live a beautiful quality of life in an apartment um, and have all those amenities nearby. So th this is so wonderful that you have done this and uh, yeah, and your group for doing that. Was there anything else you'd like to share before we wrap up the interview and just let people then know about the presentation? Yeah, no, thank you. I mean, thank you for talking to me and uh, I really look forward to the presentation. I, I particularly will be interested in the, the questions and the plans that people have for participation in this space. Yeah, as you point out, there's at the moment it, it does take quite a courageous and committed group. And it's really exciting to think that more people are wanting to sort of play in this particular sandpit. And also that groups like the Society for Alternative Housing Development are going to make that easier for people, that, that if we can make some changes to the law and some changes to the way people see these kind of projects, that actually we can lower the bar and we can demonstrate success and we can encourage so many more people to participate in making their own homes. Yeah, and homes that they want to live in and with That's right. folks that share similar values and, and have that quality of life.